there, Twilight Mist. Hope you're having a very happy Freya's Day. I'm uh, calling the weekdays what they're actually named instead of the fake names that we've taken upon them. So I'm not a Wiccan. <laughs> I, don't, I think Wiccans observe that sort of thing, but I'm not a Wiccan. <laughs> I'm just learning how to decode words and things and use language properly because it's kind of been fucked up. Anyways, let's get on subject. Okay, so kiss session. Wah, how you doing? Um, okay, so this is going to be kiss number three. Keep it simple, sillies. This is about energy. Now, you've probably seen commercials from Gaia. You might have. If you hang out on YouTube, you've probably run into it. I know I have. Um, everything is energy. This is absolutely true. Your body actually has more in common with a thunderhead cloud than it does with a rock. <laughs> you're full of water. You're constantly in motion. It's, you're never static, not even for a moment. Uh, you're full of electricity, full of water. You've got a little bit of carbon and dust in there. You know, if you uh, research um, what they did when they uh, started looking deeper and deeper into cells and then into the atoms and then deeper, what they find is there's practically nothing there. There is more space than anything and within that space there is an indescribable energy which they can't define i wonder why that is <laughs> prime source creator that's why or god as some of you prefer that's fine y'all know me about that <laughs> if you've seen my first two videos you know so energy i actually i this is like the fourth or fifth video i've made um I actually was trying to make this video originally about um, emotional purging, death that people are facing, death of loved ones and friends, and dead and dying or toxic relationships. And this isn't just romantic. Um, this is also for friends, for family, for careers and business. Um, everything is energy and energy exchange. That is a relationship. So, keep it simple, sillies. Kiss it as much as you can. And the way I do this, the way I have found to do this, is to just focus on myself. We're taught not to focus on ourselves a lot. We're taught to disregard ourselves and our needs and put others first. And while in theory that's good, you can't give out what you don't have. Most of us are depleting our own energy. We're depleting our own possibility for greater things serving the greater good because we are giving our energy away to people places and things that are no longer serving us um, and that are just downright toxic um, the way this ties into death is because just regular death because I'm gonna get rid of the death issue first with the energy exchange because we are a mini-me of the earth in, energetically in the sense that we have electromagnetic toroidal field that we're always generating. When we have these very close relationships, we become energetically enmeshed with them. I've touched on that before. When that person dies, that, especially if you loved them, if you hated them, it seems easier, but in a sense, it's equally difficult. Um, it's a little bit of a lighter load because you don't miss them. If you've loved that person, you know, that's hard because um, the person you love is no longer physically there for you to interact with. But energetically, that cord, the, because the other person's not at the end of that energetic core, that's like a live wire, spitting energy. And guess whose energy is going out from it? because the other person's not there to receive it. It's yours. Because when you have a relationship, there's the energy's going both ways. There's always a give and take. So, um, it's good to research energy cord cutting for this and for toxic relationships. Um, because if you allow that open energetic cord to flail around like that, not only does your difficulty in dealing with the loss of that individual is prolonged, but physically and energetically, you're leaking boat, you're sinking. And 
not only does it suck and it hurt emotionally and mentally, but your body breaks down because you're leaking. Um, and cutting that energy cord from someone you love is not an act of forgetting about them. It's not an act of, you know, just ignoring them because you don't want to face it. No, that's loving yourself in such a way that you can continue to honor them in your life and not have it, um, because, you know, when we're in pain, we do a lot of things to try to deal with that pain, to try to cope. Um, people get into alcoholism, drugs, sex, um, <laughs> you know, people do crazy things sometimes. So, um, yeah, you should probably cut that cord. And then also be aware that running water, the closest body of running water to you, water acts like, because of the negative ions always being given off, water acts like a, just a free energy source for spirit, in a sense. So if you feel the need that you want to speak to a loved one that's passed on recently, think about where you live in the closest body of water and go there. Go there just to kind of think about them and talk to them or maybe ask for a sign from them, whatever. I mean, we all deal with it in our own ways, but doing that, you'll be surprised at what shows up and what happens for you there. Um, and you may even find that they give you little signs along the way, like, hey, I'm still okay. Hey, I'm around you. I love you. Don't worry. I'm watching over you now kind of thing. A lot of people get that. So um, if you feel inclined to look into that, to do that, please do. Um, that could be a very important step on your healing in regards to, you know, the loss of that individual in your life. And honestly, they're never going to be gone. Not completely, not really, because, um, those heart and soul ties that are really deeply impactful on us, they never fully go away. So, um, that's always, uh, you know, the good thing to look forward to, but moving through the pain physically <laughs> and keeping balanced emotionally and mentally that's where the real struggle lies so um doing an energy cord cutting um practice for that will benefit you greatly now if you're in a toxic dead or dying relationship no matter if it's with a person uh or um like a job um that isn't necessary because um again it's energy exchange keep it simple look at yourself what are you giving out and what is it giving you? Is it making you stronger and better? Is it helping you truly? Because, I mean, this is easy to say because, I mean, I'm, I mean, I've been married and I'm divorced now. And I, as a parent, as a single parent, I know the, <laughs> the harsh behemoth of even considering uh, upending your life because you know that this is not healthy. Um, if you have kids, I would just like to point out for the record, up until the age of seven, your children are in a, uh, a semi-hypnagogic state, which means they're partially in a trance. Energetically and subconsciously, they are absorbing like a dry sponge everything that is in their energy field, and that's the majority of that is at school and at home, mostly at home. If you are unhealthy in your relationships, even if everything looks okay on the outside and your kids don't know, they don't have to know. They are absorbing that energetic pattern and you are fucking them up. You don't think you're fucking them up, but you're fucking them up. My son was a deciding factor for me to say, okay, spirit, because I had come into understanding of the law of attraction when my relationship started to go downhill. And I started not liking who I was becoming because, I mean, a lot of people like to blame the other person, but I'll be perfectly honest. I, I take responsibility. I was never forced into anything. We had a lot of arguments. Everything always turned out to be my fault. And I went along with it because I was trying to be, I mean, I always try to take criticism. You know, I don't want to be completely blind to criticism. Sometimes harmful or critical words might have a kernel of truth and you can't, just discard everything you always have to be willing to look at the other side just in case you know but that doesn't mean it's always true so you know you just get to a point where 
what is this person really like that I'm around? Are they toxic? Are they harming me? Like mentally and emotionally? I mean, if it's physically, obviously they're harming you. Get the fuck away. That sounds harsh, but I mean, come on. Someone's got to say it. Get away. Do whatever you have to to get away. Take care of your physical well-being. Your mental well-being. Because somebody has to be stable, especially if you've got kids. But um, my son was a deciding factor for me. It was like, well, if he's not with me to be a parent, if he's not on my side, and, I mean, I mean who's going to teach my son how to be a man? Who's going to teach my son what's right? He's going to have a dad that's acting this way. Do I want him to grow up thinking that this is normal? That this is safe? That this is you know, the way it should be. I mean, that, and then the way he was interacting with me, I'm like, do I want him to absorb that in a way where he's like that with women in his life? And that was kind of horrifying. And then I realized like, well, I, I had to take a good hard look at myself. What am I like now? Have I become better in this relationship? Is it making me worse? And I was on a fucking downward spiral. I did not like who I was becoming. I had so much frustration and rage that I was suppressing because I was trying to be understanding and good and look at the good. And I was using law of attraction and honestly that helped for a little while. But I got to a point where I'm like, okay spirit, you know what? I'm going to stop being stubborn because I had, I was a, I'm a stubborn ass person. <laughs> it's just the way I am. <laughs> I'm a Libra, I'm stubborn. And um, I was like, when I get married, I'm staying married. You know, I'm not going to cop out. I'm not going to bail, you know. I'm not going to like throw in the towel when things are rough. So I had that attitude. But I had to finally say, okay, you know what, if this is wrong, if this is unhealthy, if this is not making me to be the kind of person I need to be for my own kid, okay, God, okay, spirit, because I was still considering God, God at that time. So I said, okay, I need you to give me a reason. I need you to make a way out for me. I mean, if this, if he's never going to change, and this is only going to continue to harm me and make me worse, and this is not going to get better, I need a way out. Because <laughs> I couldn't see a way out. I didn't know what to do. You just have to ask, and you have to mean it intentfully from your heart. And when I got to that point and I asked, woo, I got a reason. And it was not a good reason. I got a reason. About three or four days later. And that reason made me take steps to ensure not only my safety, but my son's safety. And then, um, and then when you talk to law enforcement, you discover that if, as a parent, you're liable. If you know you're in an unhealthy relationship and that it's going to be harmful to your kid, mentally, emotionally, or physically, Mentally and emotionally is very important. Just because he's safe physically does not mean he's not getting injured. You're liable for that damage. I mean, um, if, if something, God forbid, if something like uh, harmful happened, like, like a straight out fisticuffs fight between you and your spouse or whatever, and the kid got injured, you're both liable and put in jail for putting your child in danger, you know. I discovered that and I was like, oh fuck, so I made the right choice, so anyways. That's probably a little TMI. Um, I'm not really afraid to put it out there because you know what, I've stopped giving a fuck about what people think about me. And that's why there's no comments on any of these because I'm not here to change your mind. I'm not here to interact and to preach to you about the way I think you should be living. I'm just sharing what I have found and what's helping me and that I think might be helpful to you um, to have some awareness of and you can take it or leave it okay but yeah somebody had to be stable and I wasn't getting it with my partner <laughs> so I mean if if things are okay with you outwardly and everything's fine that's okay if you want to minimize your own light and suffocate yourself to death for the benefit of everyone around you who don't know that you're martyring yourself for them but you know that's a, a pressure cooker waiting to blow and at some point you're not going to be able to take it and this is why people 
This is why you have these people who look perfectly happy but only had a couple outward arguments and then one day the husband comes home and he kills everyone in his family and then commits suicide. Why do you think that shit happens? Yeah. You can't shut your heart off. It's an essential part of your being. You can't shut your mind off the essential part of your being. You need to work with what you've got. And if what you've got is damaging you, even if outwardly everything on paper looks good, you cannot give to the people you love what you do not have. And if it is in your best interests, in your well-being, not being a narcissist, not being selfish, but I mean if you can, if you really are truthful and you know that you're slowly dying inside, in a marriage, in a career, Career is a big thing for a lot of people. That's a hard one. Marriages, it eh, depends. But that's just me. Um, friends. You know, if you come from a real tight-knit community and you've been friends with the same people like your whole life, and out of loyalty, you know, out of genuine care and loyalty, you want to stay with them, but... Don't overlook the way they're interacting with you. Don't overlook what they're giving you. If what they're giving you sounds good, but it kills you a little inside all the time, you know, like these passive aggressive, backhanded kind of things that people say, like they'll, they'll be like, oh, okay, well, they're happy for you for something that you achieve, but at the same time they diminish it. At the same time they suck your joy away from it. Or um, they're always like distracting you. It's like they have to keep you down at their level. And if you ever start to get above their level, they bring you back down. Keep it simple. Energy exchange. Is it draining you? Does it leave you feeling empty? Does it leave you feeling lesser? Weaker? Angrier? Sadder? Just pissed off and frustrated and you really don't know why because there's a part of you you're probably ignoring that you've been ignoring for a long time and it'll make its way out one way or another you don't want a pressure cooker of your emotions and all that to blow because when that sort of thing happens that can be a lot more damaging being honest with yourself and just making it about yourself I mean, because like some people leave a relationship because they realize, oh, you know, I'm kind of attracted to this other person. They might not know. And then, you know, you start realizing there's all these things that you wanted to do that you never did. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things you have to ask yourself and no one can make those decisions for you. But don't wait for the pressure cooker to blow. Be honest. The truth is painful and difficult enough and it takes a lot of strength to deal with truth but truth with a whole lot of negative shit spewing out with it and accusations and fighting I mean that just that's a whole nother icky ball of wax and why why let it get that far I mean don't you wouldn't you have more respect and consideration for yourself and the people that you have to be responsible for, like if you are a parent, if you are a business person and you've got employees that you need to, you know, have an, be an example for. Um, and then there's the whole, you're always in a toroidal energy field. You're always putting out and bringing into you whatever is going on inside of you, whether or not things look good on the outside. You're always affecting the people around you in this way, whether you are aware of it or not. So just because you're, everything looks great, but you're slowly dying inside, you think that that's not affecting people? Because it is. You know, I, and I speak from experience as a parent, too, because um, I had nothing but frustration and anger that I was struggling with and not wanting to see um, in my relationship. And, you know, now that my son is maturing, that's his number one issue. His go-to emotion is frustration and anger. And he wasn't old enough to hear the arguments. He wasn't always in the same room when, you know, things would happen. You know, we would have these debates that would just go on where everything just ended up being my fault and blah, 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 blah. 
So, but he still energetically absorbed it. Do you really want that for your loved ones? Whether they're kids or friends or family members. Do you want that for them? Because if you don't want it for them, then why are you allowing it for you? I mean, we can't support the people around us with what we don't have to give them. And we can't be the example if we can't hold it in our own bodies and in our own being. And it's important because, I mean, even for the people you don't know, let's say you're alone, you know, you don't have any of these kind of responsibilities to worry about, but who do you interact with throughout the day? Who are you, energetically, you're rubbing off on everyone and they're rubbing off on you. Whoever has the strongest frequency that maintains that, they're the dominant frequency that's influencing everyone. So someone who's just steeped in selfishness and rage or repressed sadness and whatever, you know, people feel that. People feel it and it affects them. Same thing goes with the happy ones. I mean, I try to be one of the happy ones. <laughs> I've been doing like a lot of self-purging, emotional purging and whatnot to deal with, you know, some of that past stuff. And you can't be afraid to like feel it and let yourself feel it. Because sometimes a big part of the reason why the pressure cooker blows is because you haven't been acknowledging or seeing what's really going on in yourself. And the emotions build, the emotions build. And it gets to a point where you can't deny it. And it's either going to come out in a good way or a bad way. If you are strong enough to face it early, it doesn't have to come to that. And then at the same time, you know, um, it allows for you to see what's really happening in you. Because most of us don't see. Because we're used to distracting ourselves with entertainment, with responsibilities and whatever. And, you know, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised at what you're actually feeling about stuff because sometimes you're just not really fully aware. I mean, one of the biggest mysteries of our lives is actually getting to know ourselves because this personality, this body that you see on the outside, this is a really small aspect of who you are because the Prime Source Creator, the Omni is omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. That's what gives us our being. You know, if that's in us, I mean, that's fucking huge. That is huge. And everything is supported by that. So getting to know that part of you that is also that huge and connected to all that is, that's what's actually going to make you better. That's actually what's going to make you stronger. And sometimes you have to be your own best friend. Sorry, I've got an alarm coming up. Sometimes you have to be your own coach, your own best friend, your own parent. If the voices that, you know, if the way you think in your head is always beating you up, making you feel guilty, um, bringing you down, whose voice is that really? I mean, we get trained to act and think certain ways, but who's, where did that originally come from? Why are you in the habit of that? I mean, if you were, if that was a friend, if like who you are inside was, think of it as your kid. Or, or, or like a child version of you. If you saw someone speaking to a little five-year-old like that, would you stand by and allow that shit? Hell no. I can't, I'd hand that person their ass for even daring to treat a kid that way. With such criticalness, with such harshness, with such cruelty, right? Why do we do it to ourselves? You know, those are the things you got to like unprogram. Those are the things you got to rip away and throw in the trash. And you know, it sounds crazy, but I, I had to do this a often, often for like a good couple years. I don't need to do it anymore, but I had voices, like ways of thinking, tormenting me, beating me up, saying it's my fault, blah, 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 blah. And I would have to go, wait a minute, shut the fuck up. And I would go into a bathroom, look myself in the mirror, and I would order that thought, that attitude, that voice out of my head, out of my heart, you have no place here. You have to stand your ground with strong, willful intent. No one's going to do that for you. You have to be your own hero internally before you can gain that strength back. Because if you've been beaten down for a long time, 
No one's going to give it to you. People may try to help, but if you let people outside of you help you in that way constantly, then you're still kind of in victim mode, needing a savior. And you're never going to get your power back in victim mode. You have to stand up for yourself, for your heart, for who you truly are. And if you don't know who you truly are, just protect yourself anyways. And that way you have some strength and time to figure out and get to know who you are. Um, so yeah, that kind of went on a tangent a little bit, I think. <laughs> but it's energy exchange. And then it's like managing your own energy as well. Just start with you. And everything will flow out from that. And don't be afraid to ask. I'm going to keep saying it. You're probably going to get tired of it. Don't be afraid to ask for what you need. For what you need to understand. For what you need to see clearly about yourself and the situations in your life. Ask for the strength. Ask for... Just intend to know... Like, I like to ask for favor because favor is very protective. I invoke favor over myself. Favor. I ask for wisdom to guide me into all understanding and truth. And ask for guidance into joy and gratitude because when you're grateful that just brings more love and compassion and gratitude and joy and good things that help lift you up and build you up so just ask for these things every day speak it into your being invoke it look yourself in the mirror say it upon yourself like a blessing you have that right you have that right and no one can take it from you so even if you feel like a complete jackass at first, and let me tell you, sometimes you'll do it and part of your head goes, you're just fooling yourself. You know, you're just lying to yourself. You know, this is just so stupid. Shut the fuck up. Get out of there. Once you start like standing up to it, you'll be surprised at what happens. You've got like space. And then you can start replacing that with preferred thoughts, with preferred attitudes, with new perceptions and if you don't know what you want to replace it with ask for guidance and what's the best way to replace this thought to replace this attitude ask ask and it shall be given seek and you shall find knock and the door will open because that's your right and no one can take it from you okay so kiss it kiss it good peace love you twilight out